Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Delta Report. Today is October 7th, 2019, and I am going to do probably, probably the most important aspect of Bitcoin right here, what I'm going to talk about. Even though a lot of people wouldn't, wouldn't think so, this is extremely important. And this guy, he's right on the mic. So let's open up the charts right here and take a look. It says block streams Samson Mao. Bitcoin's blockchain size may already be too big. Well, you can never really get it too big, but it says a chief strategy officer at Bitcoin technology firm Blockstream has said that the current block size capacity may not even be needed in the future. Now you know all these guys out there are saying, oh, Bitcoin can't scale. The blockchain uh, can't scale to, to what it's going to grow to, if it's going to grow worthwide. Well, you know, I've been saying this for quite a while, that it's not needed, really. Seven transactions per second is, is far more than what's even needed. I think what we're going to get down to in the end is we're going to see less instead of more transactions per second. We're going to see less as Bitcoin becomes bigger and, and becomes worth a lot more money. And we're not talking small amounts of change here either. Because, you know, gold and cryptocurrency are going to become interchangeable. I can see this coming in the future. They're both, the two of them are going to be the two biggies on Earth as a store of value. As the fiat monetary system slowly goes into collapse. And actually, to be honest, I don't think it's going to be so slowly. I think what we're going to witness is something that's never been seen before in the history. Uh, a worldwide hyperinflation. Going back to 1971 when Nixon took us off the gold standard, it was the biggest mistake that was ever made in the history of the world. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me, I have a flu. Anyway, biggest mistake that was ever made in the history of the world. The U.S. dollar was pegged to gold. And that gave it an underlying value. That was, gold is always, all the way through history, has been the store of value for the world. But gold doesn't move into the modern age. You can't transfer gold across the internet real physical gold. You can store it in a warehouse or whatever, but it's heavy. It's like lead, you know? Bitcoin can make it feasible to move vast quantities of gold across the internet almost instantaneously. The two are going to mesh together ultimately in the end. You see, we're going through a period right now where there's almost like a, a war between Bitcoin and gold. Which is better? Which is better? And a lot of people say, oh, gold. And a lot of people say Bitcoin. Well, they're going to continue to go through this war, ultimately, and gold is going to move up, Bitcoin's going to lag behind, then Bitcoin's going to shoot up and gold's going to lag behind. And the two of them are in a race toward the end of the world's fiat monetary system. And this is going to be the driver that's going to drive both of these up into absolutely phenomenal values. And as Bitcoin's value increases into the trillions, what you're going to see happening is, is most transactions are going to be done on the Lightning Network. And then settlement is going to occur on the main chain of Bitcoin. And so you could do like a million transactions on the Lightning Network and then do one settlement transaction well, maybe I exaggerated a little bit with a million transactions, but a, a, a lot of transactions on the Lightning Network. And then do one settlement transaction on the main network, which can handle seven transactions per second. So that's basically what's going to happen is, is as a store of value, Bitcoin is basically going to sit in people's wallets like a bank account. Like a bank account full of gold. If they want gold, they can use Bitcoin to buy gold with. If you want to buy Bitcoin, you can use gold. This is the future. When we see 
You can use gold to buy Bitcoin. You can use Bitcoin to buy gold. And when these two become transferable between each other, all of these coins that were trying to be backed by gold, these cryptocurrencies that have been trying to, they've been trying this off and on for a long time to make a cryptocurrency backed by gold. What they don't realize is Bitcoin is that coin. Bitcoin is that coin. Bitcoin is already backed by gold. If you got a Bitcoin in your account right now, you can transfer it into gold already. You know, and so it's already that coin. It doesn't need to have a hard peg to gold. And in fact, a hard peg to gold would be less productive than the way it is right now. So he says, current block size is suitable. According to Mao, Bitcoin now has the equivalent of 4 megabyte block size if transactions which use segregated witness technology are included. The future will show, however, that the current block size may actually be too big. Well, you can't get too big, but, it, but it's, it's going to be perfectly adequate to handle the whole world's transactions. <coughs> Mal comments are in stark contrast with the often quoted narrative amongst commentators who worry that Bitcoin's network capacity will fall, fail to deal with future increases in demand. So in other words, not scalable. This is the same old argument we've heard for ages now, but it's not scalable. When the real truth is, Bitcoin is scalable. Now I'm just going to talk about one other thing before I go. I'm going to talk about quantum computing. And the threat it poses to cryptocurrencies. Well, you have to look at it in relative terms. The dollar and the whole dollar network of all of the fiat currencies out there right now have all went digital. But unlike Bitcoin and the cryptocurrencies, the digitalization, digitalization of the dollar and the other fiat currencies has been done, on, scaled out on an old system. And they're not using near as strong a, a, a cryptography as Bitcoin already has. And Bitcoin can be modified to make it more uh, proof, more, more proof, more uh, uh, quantum computer proof. It can be modified. So the argument that Bitcoin is going to be destroyed by quantum computers, I don't buy that either because the fiat monetary system is much more vulnerable to quantum computing than the cryptographic monetary system. And so what kind of a monetary system can we actually have that's not vulnerable to uh, qu quantum computing? Well, the truth is, as soon as we go online, it doesn't matter what we're trying to buy or sell. As soon as we go online, we're vulnerable to quantum computing and the power of quantum computers. I tend to think that this power of quantum computers is, has been uh, put out there by people who want the Bitcoin price to fall so they can snatch up a few more Bitcoins, you know? There's people out there, you know, right now that are just hoping and praying that the Bitcoin price will fall some more. <coughs> but we don't see it happening. Let's take a look today at what's going on. Bitcoin price and cryptocurrency starting to take off a little bit again. Uh, let me refresh the page here. 221 billion. It's went up 2 billion in the last hour or so since I did my first report on the other channel. And we're looking at 82.31 for Bitcoin, but the price is shooting up on all the coins. Like like coins going up. Uh, I think you could have had them for like 54 bucks. Now they're 57. Bitcoin Cash is going up a lot, over 5%. XRP is really shooting up. It's over 8% today alone. Ethereum's going up. It's 178 bucks. It's up 2.35% on the day. All the coins are going up. 
Uh, now, I did a show just a couple days ago, and I told you guys, I said the lower it goes on this end, the better buying opportunity it's going to create, and the faster it's going to shoot up on the other end when it takes off. I'm not so sure it's taken off yet. We see a little increase in price here, but I'm not so sure that they've really taken off yet. It's a little bit premature for me to tell, but I can tell you this much. Bitcoin's here to stay. It's gonna, the network is going to slowly grow until it takes over everything. Bitcoin and the other cryptographic currencies. And, you know, this is a monetary system that's running parallel to the fiat monetary system. The fiat monetary system's going down, so what's going to be left when the fiat monetary system goes down? Well, we got a growing monetary system right here. The cryptographic monetary system is growing by leaps and bounds, and we got a fiat monetary system that's dying. You look at all these coins. Look at them. There's thousands of them here, different ones. They're all positioning themselves <coughs> to become the new monetary system. And this is an amazing time we live in, you know? Look, there's old Digibyte. Number 49. I like Digibyte, you know? Nice coin, really nice coin. It's number 49 right now. Uh, a few other coins I like. Uh, I like Zcash. You know, look at Dogecoin. Dogecoin right now. Uh, <laughs> something, something super zip on the day. I like Dogecoin. Neo's a great coin. It's like the, I think it's the Chinese Ethereum. <laughs> Ethereum Classic. Dash. Dash is a nice coin. 71.65 today. IOTA. It's 28 cents today. <clears throat> so, the coins are doing great. I like Monero, too. Cardano. Stellar. Uh, I'll tell you, once you get up into these top coins, the only one I don't like is XRP. And, you know, I've been negative on XRP for a long time. One of the big reasons I'm going to tell you is the fact that they're holding all those XRPs, like 50 billion of them, in storage. You know, I don't like that. That's like that's like a sort of Damocles hanging over XRP's head, you know? Okay, thank you guys for listening to this show. Give me a thumbs up, and we'll catch you guys in the very next show. Bye-bye.